interested my father. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you a picture. This is actually one of my favorite pictures of me. <sighs> because it was taken by my dad. So, this sort of says it all. Um, I, I like to keep these little moleskin books. They're fun. And uh, so this picture I, I, I put in here. Um, we, had a, we had a rambler and on the roof um, was a roof rack and it, was, it had all of our belongings. Um, and on the way, we took three weeks. We left in July, end of July of 1969. We took three weeks to go across country and um, we stopped, I believe this was in North Dakota somewhere, or South Dakota, a place called the Old West Museum. And I recently looked to see if I can find out where that was, but I can't, I haven't been able to find anything. So, um, so, so here's this photo, somebody just said road trip. Um, so here's this photo, I remember it like it was yesterday. My dad, um, after we um, looked at the, you know, covered wagons and stuff, uh, my dad lifted me up and put me on the roof of the car. That's me, I'm seven years old, um, and that's all our stuff. So we literally didn't go with much. <laughs> Um, we stayed in a motel one night, Motel 6 or, or Travel Lodge, and we slept in the car the next night. So we alternated, and across the country we went. We ended up in San Francisco in 1969. We went to San Francisco because I remember my mom said that Bruce had a girlfriend who said she had been there and it was nice. So that's what they were going on. <laughs> so, um, so we end up in San Francisco in 1969. I will never forget it to this day. I'm in the back seat looking out the back window as we drive through Golden Gate Park. Now, if you can imagine Golden Gate Park in August of 1969, yeah. We were not in freehold anymore. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's how we ended up in California. That's how I ended up in California. And I am partly a California girl because of it. So, uh, so that's, that's that story. When I was 18, I moved to Los Angeles um, because my brother had a girlfriend who said it was nice there. <laughs> question too. Um, do you oh. like your time in California? Did I like, do I like my time in California? I yeah. love California. California is an awesome state and um, absolutely. I love my time in California. I love Los Angeles. I love San Francisco. I'm very California. Um, it's definitely in me. <laughs> so anyway, so I moved to Los Angeles when I was 18 and um, did I say we were in New Jersey right now? Did I say that? Uh, we're oh, we're so living in New Jersey right now. 50 years later, back we came. Yeah, so here I am, I'm near my family, my mother's down the street, my brother, my sister, Bruce and Ginny, I love you. So happy to be here. So here we are in New Jersey. Um, so, um, so what I was saying, so I'm okay, so I'm in LA. I'm 18 years old, don't know what I'm doing. Um, I fall into acting, a little bit of acting. I did that before photography. I was cast in a very small role, but in a very great movie called Fast Times at Richmond High, um, where I played Dina Phillips, the cheerleader. And if you haven't seen that, you should definitely take a look. Um, so um, this story is actually leading to me to how I got into photography and what my influences were. Um, first of all, I need to do a shout out. Um, at 16, 
I was, Bruce was playing Madison Square Garden and um, we were there. And Lynn Goldsmith, Morrison Hotel Gallery's Lynn Goldsmith, was shooting the show. And afterwards she um, invited us back to her apartment, which was also her studio. And she had her camera, and she had her lights, and she had her studio. And I thought, my 16 year old self thought, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like, she's so cool, that's so cool. <laughs> and I know it must have made an impact on me. Um, a couple years later, I was in Fast Times at Richmond High, and um, Cameron Crowe, who you all know wrote that wonderful film, his best friend was the one and only Neil Preston, Morrison Hotel Gallery's Neil Preston. So I met Neil, and Neil asked me to go to a Stevie Nicks concert with him, which he was shooting. So I said, great. So um, I went with him to the show, and I watched him work. And I thought, I want to do that. That's, that looks, that's great. That looks like so much fun. I want to do that. I remember it just like, you know, it wasn't that long ago. So for my 19th birthday, um, I asked my parents for a camera. And I literally, oh, hi. Um, I literally uh, got a camera for my 19th birthday and um, started taking pictures. Yes, Neil is great. Um, Lynn Goldsmith, awesome. Um, so I started taking pictures and I lived in New York for maybe a three month period at that time. And um, I was walking around the city taking a bunch of photos. And um, my brother called me up and he said, um, I'm gonna pick you up, I wanna, I wanna take you somewhere, we're gonna go for a ride. So I said, okay, so I get in the car and he takes me to, lo and behold, Morrison Hotel Galleries Frank Stefanko's house. Um, Frank had been shooting some photos of Bruce and Bruce was going down to take a look at them, look at the proof sheets. And Frank um, showed me his dark room and it was the first time that I had ever been in a dark room. Um, and uh, I'm sure it made a big impression. Frank said that I was so shy that I didn't say a word the whole time. So I'm saying it now, thank you, Frank. That was very cool. <laughs> anyway, these are the influences that sort of slowly led me along to photography. Yes, yay, Frank, it says. Um, so, um, so then, okay, this is a true story and we will, we will look at photos soon, I promise. Um, <laughs> this is a true story. And this is really, this was really the, the, the light bulb that went off in my head that said, this is what you're doing. Um, it, I had a dream. I had a dream. I lived in a little uh, garage apartment, little apartment above a garage, teeny tiny, like the size of this room maybe. And um, I came, in my dream, I came home one day and my apartment had burned to the ground. Everything I owned was gone and black and destroyed and ash. And there was, I had nothing, there was nothing left standing. The only thing left standing in the middle of all this rubble was my camera on a tripod. And that was, that was the moment I said, okay, let's, let's, I love this. I'm passionate about it. That's a sign. Let's go for it. So I called up a friend of mine who had a friend named Glenn Wexler, who was a very well-known photographer who did a lot of music photography and advertising photography. And I called him up and I said, um, look, I said, I really would love to assist you. I love your work and I would really love to assist you. And he said, okay, come on in. And so we had a meeting and um, he said to me, he said, so do you know how to load a Hasselblad? And I said, um, no. And he said, okay, um, do you know how to plug in the, the lights? And I said, um, no. And he said, okay, um, do, you, do you know how to print? And I said, nope. <laughs> and he said, I'll call you. <laughs> so I went home and I knew he wasn't gonna call me. <laughs> But I waited and I waited. Three weeks went by, he didn't call me. So the fourth week, I called him. 
I said, hey, Glenn, it's Pam. What do you think? Um, and uh, he said, look, I, you don't know anything. I, I can't hire you as an assistant. I said, if you want to, he said, if you want to work as an intern, um, we'll give it a try. So uh, I said, absolutely. So that day I, I went to work for Glenn Wexler and he taught me everything. I am in, so indebted to him and grateful for his generosity and teaching me what he knows, lighting, how to print, um, opening up his studio to me, letting me use his studio when he wasn't, and um, just an all around fabulous opportunity that I am so grateful for. Um, and so that's, that's how I got started in photography. Um, I will tell you about my first uh, real opportunity um, in a second, and then I'll show you some pictures. Um, oh, I, I have a couple of prints here, and I'm going to show them to you first um, because because I have them. <laughs> okay, so first, um, before I was really a photographer, um, I had my camera, I was taking pictures. Um, hi, Italy. Um, there's comments at the bottom. I don't know if everybody can see them or not, but, uh, so, um, yes, yes, yes. you can. Oh, Ruby says yes. So, um, I had taken a lot of photos of my dad because, uh, my dad was a very interesting subject. He didn't change whether he was in front of a camera or not. It was as if he didn't even see the camera in front of him. He was completely natural at all times. So, um, Jimmy, I think I saw my sister. Um, so, um, I took a lot of pictures of my dad and, um, I took some photos of him, uh, in a diner with my mom eating pancakes and they were just kind of, you know, kind of classic diner shot. And um, I sent some of those to, to Bruce and I said, uh, what do you think these pictures of dad? And he said, he liked them. And he said, do you want to take some pictures of me? And I said, sure. So I flew out to New Jersey and um, this was really like, I had never had a job or anything before. This was really like, you know, I had just gotten my camera. And, uh, and so I flew out to New Jersey and we, we, just hung around one afternoon and took some pictures. Well, I'm gonna show you a couple of them now. Um, to this day, to this day, this is one of my absolute favorites. Um, doesn't matter uh, that I was inexperienced or anything. It just, it was a moment, it was, it happened. And uh, I'm really proud of this image and, and, and I love it. So I'm gonna show that to you first. Um, and I do happen to have a print of it, and this is, this is it, this is Bruce, um, in his writing room, in, um, in his house, and, uh, this is his table that was by the window. This was during the, um, Tunnel of Love time, when, uh, that record was recorded or being recorded and, and, um, about to be released. And uh, we just, we were just kind of hanging out. And you know, the, one of the exciting things um, about being a photographer is that um, you really want to try to be a fly on the wall. You want to try to not get in anybody's way. You want to just try to stay out of the way, let them do their thing and quietly capture a moment. And, um, this is this is one of my favorites to this day. Um, we've got his his notebook on the table and car keys. We had just been in the car actually, um, and the light side light coming through the window. Um, so this is all natural lit, naturally lit Triax film. Um, and then in the background you can see like just like little you know the clock and little things and um i just i just love the the feeling the the emotion in this in this photo and, and the feeling um so this was this was from that day this was 
one of my very first uh, attempts. <laughs> so um, I'm still proud of it. Um, do what? So, so um, also on that day, this shot was taken. This was taken in the studio and um, the recording studio, not the, not the, I didn't have a studio at the time. This was taken in the recording studio, uh, again by the window. And um, this photo here, maybe some of you have seen it. Um, it was used for the Brilliant Disguise single sleeve, which that was my absolute first publishing experience. So I was very, very proud and um, love this picture as well. Love the mood in it and the light and the feeling. And so that was just a really nice day. Um, I'm gonna um, skip to, I'm gonna show you just a couple of prints that I have before we move on to the computer. So the computer is, once we're down there, I think we're down there. Um, okay, so this is a job that I did recently that was um, also really, really fabulous opportunity. Um, I got to shoot Willie Nelson and um, we shot him uh, at his ranch um, in Texas, um, Luck. And this was uh, a room where we set up some lights and a backdrop. Um, we did a lot of shots that day. We, we shot all around the ranch. Um, but this was one of them. This is one of my favorites. And this is one of my favorites because um, what I was, what I really was drawn to, first of all, Willie was amazing to shoot. We had a fantastic time, really fun. Um, but what I was drawn to um, were his hands. And his hands, and I think you can tell in this photo, um, and maybe some of you, you know his guitar, um, Trigger, his guitar's name is Trigger, and goes everywhere with him, and has, you know, been around. And um, you were just telling me to hold it closer, so I will. And, oh, okay. And um, so it gets a little blown out there when we're near the window, but you can probably see more details. So the, the actual print is a, is a little darker and more contrasty. Um, I loved the texture, all the textures in the guitar, um, and all the wonderful textures and lines in his hands. And, and I really wanted this shot to be, his hands to really be the focus of what we were doing there. And, and this was, you know, this was one of, most of them he was looking at the camera. But um, this was, this was a moment where, where I just thought, I want, I want that to be the focus. So I, I love this. And also, Willie on his ranch, he has a bunch of um, horses that he rescues, which is a really wonderful thing. So if you go to his website, you can read all about that. Um, at the end of the day, um, we went and we shot some of those horses. And uh, this is another uh, image, one of my favorites from that day that came out of that. So, okay. So now we're gonna move on down to the computer where I can show you more images and then you can ask some questions. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> I got it, I got it, okay, here we go. All right, now you're coming with me. All right, so I'm gonna have to flip this around. And how do I, oh, I see. Got it, Ruby. Okay, so here we go. Um, you've seen this, I showed you this, this is me on the, car uh, on the way to California in 1969. And um, that's Bruce, his writing desk. And then this is, I, I like to show proof sheets because I think it's really fun to look at proof sheets sometimes. Um, and so this is uh, one of the proof sheets from that day in the studio. And if I move in, it's gonna get a little blown out, but you can kind of see the idea. Um, this was my very first job, like real job. This is, this is, um, Tony Childs and, and, um, Tony was a friend, friend of a friend, and she was endorsing this guitar. 
and um, this guitar. And they hired me to shoot some photos of her with the guitar. Oh, you have a, you question? Have a question about um, what kind of camera you use for the photos? Oh, okay. Well, this is a Hasselblad. I used a Hasselblad for this. Um, so um, I will actually, at the end, I'll answer the questions in um, more depth. Um, but so, so we go out to the desert. I'll make the story brief. Um, first job, didn't really know what I was doing. And, uh, we go to the desert and the light is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. It's end of the day. It's magic hour. It's golden. She looks great. The guitar looks beautiful. I have my Hasselblad. I have a long lens. I'm hand holding it 2.8, probably shooting 100 speed film. Do you know what that equals? It equals out of focus. <laughs> That's what it equals. Rookie mistake. <laughs> you can't hand hold a Hasselblad on a long lens with slow film at 2.8. Um, you just can't do it. So, um, so back we went the following week <laughs> and re-shot. Luckily, she was a friend. Um, and we did this shot which I actually like even better. So that's the story to that. Keith, well, this was exciting. Keith Richards, I'm gonna back up a little bit because the screen is kind of blowing out the images. Um, Keith Richards, I shot him at the Morrison, um, not, sorry, not Morrison, I'm sorry, I just got distracted by a quote, by a, by a comment. Um, Sorry, um, <laughs> I'm getting distracted. <laughs> um, okay, so um, so we shot at the Four Seasons, Four Seasons Hotel in Beverly Hills. Um, so I believe it was Spin Magazine. They called me up and they said, um, "Do you are you free to shoot Keith Richards?" And I'm like, "Of course, <laughs> of course I am." So uh, so we we set up in the conference room at the Four Seasons Hotel. And uh, they told me I'd have 30 minutes with him. And I said, great. So we waited and we waited and we waited and finally there's a knock at the door. And um, I'm thinking it's him. I answer the door and there's a gentleman standing there with a bottle of vodka and some orange soda. <laughs> and he says to me, this is for Keith, he'll be right down. <laughs> I said, great. So he came down and we literally could have done the shoot in five minutes. He was absolutely wonderful um, to work for, sweetest guy, and uh, was, was really a great time. So um, that's Keith. Um, I did a lot of photography for a magazine that kind of was uh, reinvented in the early 90s called Cream Magazine. It was short-lived, I think, but it was a photographer's dream, and I do have to give them a lot of credit for um, launching me in a way, because um, the magazine itself was the size of interview with uh, big photos, big type, glossy, beautifully printed glossy pictures, and they gave me a lot of work, and um, I really built my portfolio that way and my career that way, and I am also forever grateful to them. Um, so this is Lenny Kravitz. It was from a shoot that I did with them. And um, uh, that was his dog. This was the back of his house. This was his house actually. Um, and that's his dog. And then here we go. This is a proof sheet again. Um, I really loved this proof sheet because I think it's more interesting than a single image for, for this, for this um, particular image. And uh, it's just kind of fun to see the way we marked them up in, in those days, you know, the, the before digital. Uh, before digital, we, we had to go and pick up our proof sheets at the lab and go over them and mark them and crop them and turn them back into the lab with all these instructions, like three 11 by 14s, burn the blacks, dodge the face, that kind of stuff. Um, if you weren't printing yourself, of course, you would have to do that. 
Um, can can I might can everybody hear me okay? Like, um, yeah, I mean, I can't hear yes. the sound, but I think so. Okay. What? Is it paused? No, it's not paused. Oh, it said pause because you weren't using yeah. the app. Just wait there. Oh, we're back. oh, we're back. Okay, cool. We're back. Sorry. Yes, they can all hear okay. you. They say. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so um, so that's Lenny Kravitz. This next shot, um, this was a very exciting uh, photo shoot for me as well. This is Neil Young, and um, I was also hired by Cream Magazine to do this shoot, and they called me up and they said, uh, Pam, um, we, have a, we have an assignment for you. You're gonna, go to, you're gonna go to Northern California, and you're gonna go shoot Neil Young on his ranch. And I said, Oh my God, that's that's amazing. I, I love Neil Young, I was a huge fan. I'm going to Northern California to shoot him on the ranch, photographer's dream. Uh, it was all great until the day before we were supposed to leave. And they called and they said, okay, a little change of plans. You, you, we're still gonna do the shoot, but you, you gotta go down to the video shoot. He's, he's shooting a video in Los Angeles and we're gonna do it there now. Um, so, you know, every photographer knows that you're not the priority on a video shoot. And so, but that's okay. I got there, they said, get there at four o'clock. I got there at four o'clock. I waited five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. <laughs> and finally at midnight, <laughs> because did I say you're not a priority when you're on a video shoot? <laughs> the video's the priority. Um, so midnight comes and um, his manager comes up to me and he says, you have five minutes. <laughs> I said, great. So we uh, got him on the altar. This was in a church. They were shooting the video in a church. Um, we put him on the altar, lit some candles behind him and literally in five minutes we, uh, we got this shot. So he was also extremely lovely to work with. And um, I've been really lucky to work with some really, really nice people. Uh, Trent, Nine Inch Nails, Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor came to my studio and um, we shot, we were gonna do some dark images and I don't know, I, I thought what kind of a concept can I come up with? Um, so he came to my studio. This film that I'm shooting, it's, it's very uh, contrasty, very grainy. It's called Polygraph. It was one of my favorite films to shoot, um, it was difficult because um, it had very little latitude, which me meant that you couldn't make any mistakes in um, your exposures. And um, and uh, so, and it also scratched really easily, really easily. So basically you run it through the camera, you take your pictures, you keep your fingers crossed, you put it in a little plastic machine and you crank the handle and out comes the film which you then have to cut every single frame and put into a glass mount so it doesn't scratch. That was Polygraph. It was worth it. So this is uh, Trent. This is, um, we started with some just, you know, moody portraits. And then I took some shots of his hands. And, um, and then I said to him, can I wrap you in barbed wire? <laughs> no idea how he would respond to this <laughs> he said sure so we wrapped Trent in barbed wire and um and here we are and we're getting reflections on this because it's a dark image but uh, I think if you go to morrisonhotelgallery.com you can see a higher resolution version of this um one of my favorites really I love the light I love his expression and um, it was actually not real barbed wire. It was from a prop house. So he wasn't getting hurt, don't worry. <laughs> okay, now we're coming up to one of my all time favorites, Randy Newman. Randy Newman, I've shot Randy Newman many times. Um, Randy is a pleasure to photograph. We always have fun. I'll just show you how much fun we have. Um, here we're shooting in a studio and uh, there was a bike there. Don't know why, but there was a bike. And I said, Randy, how about hopping on the bike and riding around the studio? So he did. 
he did, and and this is one of the proof sheets, one of the proof sheets from that day, and it, we really had a lot of fun. Uh -huh. So, um, so then recently I photographed him uh, for his new album called. These images are. These images are actually, they're a little blown out here, but that's all right. Um, they're very dark and moody. And uh, he's just... And then this is the, the our idea our idea was to take that piano to the beach put it in the sand and have him play there uh we never got to the beach we um it was too cold so we basically scrapped that idea this is the piano randy playing the piano in the back of um the grip truck and I want to talk about this for a second. Um, uh, look at all that equipment. You see? These shoots are not done alone. These shoots are done with the help of very talented and dedicated people. Um, our, our assistants, our hair and makeup artists, our stylists, um, and without the, the team, uh, y you couldn't do it. Um, so uh, these are really, really important people um, to have. And I'm seeing that somebody's telling me my time is running out. So I better hurry. Okay. Um, so I just want to thank, you know, everybody that's always been there to support me and help me throughout my shoots and, and, and uh, make it all work, make it all happen. Um, a stylist can um, really, you know, make a huge difference on, on, on a shoot. And um, all these people are out of work right now because we can't take any pictures. Um, we can't do any photo shoots. So um, one of my stylists uh, that I work with a lot, Karen Dusenberry, you can go to her Instagram. She is making masks. Uh, out of her, the clothing that she used for uh, Ringo, uh, Counting Crows, and many other musicians that she's worked with. If you're interested in fabric uh, from your favorite rock star for your for your coronavirus mask, go to her Instagram and DM her. Um, Ice Cube. Okay, we're going to start to go fast now because Ruby tells me I'm running out of time. Ice Cube, the Predator. Um... I shot this, I shot Ice Cube three times as well, one for Spin Magazine. Um, then he called me six months later and said, would you do my album cover? We shot this cover for The Predator. It was a great day, no pun intended, <laughs> but it was. And again, this was shot on Polygraph film. And, um, and then he came back uh, for his next album or a couple albums later, um, War and Peace. And we did this, and this was the very last shot of the day actually, where. Um, my makeup artist, uh, Carter Bradley, painted a um, mask on his face. And that, that ended up being something that he used for a while after that when he was on tour here. Um, so we have many, uh, oh, uh, Bruce fans in Italy. 
Um, it's always fun to shoot the audience. The audience is great. <laughs> I love shooting. It's so fun to shoot the fans. I love it. I love it. Um, there's Bruce and Patty. Okay. This, of course, I love because I love these two people that are in it. Um, but this also is the last night of the uh, Los Angeles Sports Arena, and um, which no longer exists. But they closed it out, and it was a great night, and the shot was taken then. Um, location is everything. Location shots. James Taylor. I'm going to... Oh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Uh, super fun. Um, okay, I'm going to... Uh, Lindsay Buckingham. Um, Lindsay... More Lindsay Buckingham. I'm going to just go through some of these, Melissa Etheridge, so that I can take your questions, because we have about five minutes left. And I do want to talk about the, the last Roseanne Cash. We did that. Um, Ruby, my daughter, in the storm on the beach. Um, I do want to talk about um, Tom Morello, uh, Tears for Fears, Alison Krauss, Robert Plant, Raising Sand. I had the honor of shooting that album cover. Um, boy, was that fun. And, I, and, and it won Album of the Year. It actually won um, every... Uh, it won a Grammy in every single category it was nominated in. It's an amazing album, amazing music. Please, if you haven't heard it, go listen to it. It's fantastic. And I was really proud to be part of it. Here we are, Bruce. Um, we're back to Bruce. This is Ghost of Tom Joad. Um, last story. Um, again, uh, Bruce called me up and said, I got a record coming out. Let's go take some pictures. So we hopped in the car. We were going to go out to the desert, uh, um, the Mojave Desert, which we did. Um, but we got a little late start in the day. And um, by the time we got out there, I saw the sun was going down and I'm like, we've got to just uh, get out of the car and start taking pictures. So, um, so we literally pulled over to the side of the road and there was this fence and um, we started taking some photos there. We took some photos there. And these are some other of the photos that we took there, it's a fun, fun photos. And then at the very end of the day, I threw, threw in some uh, T, TMZ, T-Max, T-Max, th fast film into my camera. And I saw up on the ridge, there was still a little bit of light. And I said, quick, let's run up to the highway. And we ran up to the highway um, to catch that last little bit of light. And I shot really fast, boom, boom, boom. And we have the series of images of Bruce walking down um, the highway in the desert. And they ended up using them for uh, uh, the uh, commercial, um, advertising, you know, the uh, well, commercial for the, um, for the album. And they put them together like a flip book. So it looked like film. It looked like a moving, moving image. Um, so this, I, these are, these are some of my all time favorites as well. And then what came out of that was, uh, the ghost of Tom Joad. Ghost of Tom Joad, I was asked to, to do a music video, all stills and for the, for the song and for the video. And I spent three weeks driving around the desert and I shot thousands, thousands of images. Um, this is a really special project for me. Um, to this day, it's um, one of my proudest. And um, they used all these images for the music video. So I'm going to answer some questions now because we are running out of time. So I'm going to flip the camera back around. Ruby, you want to? Yes. All right. Does it hold the camera to you? Do you want yeah. Or should um, I flip it and then? No, you can just do it like that. That's perfect. Um, okay. Questions. Thanks. Oh, here's, wait. Uh, the, no, excuse me a minute. Oh. I don't know. You Do you have some there? Oh, I, I have, have some there. If you don't have any there. Okay. Hi. Sorry. I know that was a lot. I hope it was interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, shout out to Ruby. <laughs> Lost the sound. Lost the sound. Can everybody hear me? Oh. Did you ever shoot shots of Kenny Rogers and Lionel Richie? No. 
Um, that's an easy one. Um, do you have any photos you took of your father? I do. I know I would love to show some, but I don't have any on me. They're in Los Angeles. Do I also, oh, there's some questions yes. here that came in earlier, so. Oh, and then um, do you just shoot musicians or do you do actors too? I do actors, I do everybody. And yes, Ruby is her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and then, I'm gonna let's see, this. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, let's see, so have you been uh, doing photography during the pandemic? Yes, I have. <laughs> have I been doing photography during the pandemic? That's what I'm, that's the question. Um, yes, yeah, so when I moved, to New Jersey, I said to myself, I'm going to take 500 pictures over a three month period. And um, I uh, haven't done that yet because now we can't leave the house. So I've done a lot. I've taken lots of pictures and someday you will see them. But I've also been doing videos of my dog. So if you go to Facebook or Instagram, you'll see my little puppy. And that's kind of what we do. Yeah. <laughs> that's how we spend our day. <laughs> 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 um, oh, another one. What was your favorite location to shoot? Oh, my favorite location. Okay, one of my, ab that's a good question. One of my absolute favorite locations, um, which I haven't shot there in a really long time, but it was El Mirage in the Mojave Desert. It was a dry lake bed. And it was just, it was literally a dry lake bed for as far as you could see. And I just loved going there and shooting. The light was amazing. It was, Tears for Fears, that album cover was shot there. And then, um, oh, who was your biggest influence? My biggest influence? That's a really difficult question. I thought about, I figured somebody would ask that. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Irving Penn, Richard Avedon, I don't know. There's so many, I and mean, was there's so many, Amazing photographers. It's really hard. John Loop C for, for so many different people for different reasons. Oh, but. lots of questions about film or digital. Okay, film or digital. I'm gonna have to go soon. They're telling me. Um, film yeah. or digital. Um, I love shooting film. I never thought I would shoot digital. I, I was one of the last that um, film would disappear. Uh, somebody said, you know, in a few years, nobody's going to be shooting film anymore. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Um, I, I love both for different reasons. I love digital. I love having a dark room on a desktop. I love being able to have that kind of control and edit photos. I love film because there's nothing like film. I miss my Polaroid. I miss, um, I miss shooting Polaroids. I miss my Polaroid camera. I miss the mystery. I miss, um, not knowing what you have until um, you see the film. You literally leave a shoot and you're like, I got it, I hope I got it, you know? Um, and it's sort of, and also the, the, but the main thing really is that digital um, on a shoot can be very intrusive. Um, there's, there's always your people are, people want to see, you know, you got it up on the big monitor. People want to see while you're shooting and it really gets in the way of the creative or can get in the way of the creative process. So, um, I love the texture of film and I love that when you're shooting film, you're just shooting because you can't look at it as you go. <laughs> um, anything else? I know we're coming to the end now. Um, lots of questions. Maybe you can, um, just write, write a response later to all sure. of this and then you can Sure. If you have a question your... that I didn't get to, um, you can DM me on my Instagram account. I'll you can, you can request to follow me. Um, I will accept and also DM me. I will try to answer your questions. And, um, what else? And your account's just at Pam Springsteen, right? Pam Springsteen. Yes. That's it. Um, and did you have, there were a couple others in that, oh, yeah, yes. in that, um, that they so, were the first ones that came in. So, so let me just. Can you talk about Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Oh, I did talk about Fast Times at Ridgemont oh. High. Okay. Didn't I? That's where I, that's where I met Neil Preston who took me to the Stevie Nicks yes, concert. Then, yeah. um, what is Keith's favorite drink? Oh, <laughs> that's funny. I do happen to know that. At least in the nineties, it was orange soda and vodka. <laughs> <laughs> this one okay uh do you ever have wild parties with the musicians <laughs> okay do i ever have wild parties with the musicians just define wild <laughs> <laughs> do 
Should we end on that note? Um, it's 5.49. I'm going over time. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it was really fun. Thank you, Ruby, for being here as moral support, helping me out. And uh, thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Oh, wait. I have one really important thing to say. Don't forget to tune in to Morrison Hotel Gallery Radio, kvmr.org, tonight at 7. Peter Blockley and Henry Diltz is going to be on, and they're going to be talking about Crosby, Stills, and Nash, um, their music, their stories. Um, it's called Under the Covers. And uh, I'm going to tune in. So, see you there. Thanks again.